This is a tutorial by YourSiteNeedsMe.com on IDX Broker Platinum Agent Control Panel, how to edit the fields in any search page. When you go to any of your search pages on your website, you're going to find, especially in the advanced, that it's going to show some of these extra fields down here. And you may want to edit some of these fields, remove them or clean them up, or add fields that you don't see. And this is actually quite easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're going to do to begin with is you're going to log into your IDX broker and you're going to go to designs and then you're going to go to pages. Now once you're in pages you're going to see all of the different pages on your site. These are your search pages. Here's your map search. These are your results pages, the pages that show the results after somebody searches. This is the detail page that somebody lands on when they're actually looking at the details of a specific uh, property and these are going to be the main ones. The ones that you see fields over here are the ones that you can edit. So starting with property search or advanced search, this is typically named advanced search, um, you're going to click on fields and if you if this name has changed it might also be homes, uh, it could be other things, just look for the word fields over here. So we're going to click on fields and it's going to give us a list of property types because each property type is going to have different fields associated with it as you know from being a realtor and logging into the back end of your MLS, uh, when you go into the MLS you have to choose your specific property type and then it gives you different fields related to that property type. So I'm going to start with residential since that's going to be one of the biggest ones and the one I get the most questions about. When you click on it, you're going to see this. Now to start with, we're going to rearrange different um, field boxes. You can actually click them up in the corner and drag and move them to where you want them to be. Now you should first look at what you have and decide if some of these things are necessary. For instance, property subtype typically isn't a field that you want to add in here for your clients to search. So you may click the little trash can up here in the right hand corner and get rid of it. If you did that by accident, it is going to add it right up here back in the top of this list right here and you can simply add it back in by clicking the plus sign and it will appear right at the top. So this one though we don't want in there. Next we're going to come down and we're going to look at some of the other things that are in here. Okay. And now I'm going to come over here and I am going to go ahead and go through these see if there's any I want to add back in. The main ones like bedroom, city, you do not want to add these in here uh, if it has anything like how many full baths, half baths, things like that. Don't add those in there because on the search page you have that primary information up here already. It's only going to confuse your client if it's also down here. So we don't want to duplicate it. Some of these may be more important to you than others. Uh, depending on your area. So you may want to you know, look at this list in full and make sure that some of them are added in just to help out because your specific area may need them. So I'm going to go through this list. And quickly, just to let you know, I'm going to probably come in here and edit this for you to begin with, but because I'm not a realtor in your area, I'm only going to be able to add the ones that I think are going to be beneficial for you. So that's why it's important for you to also come in here and do this yourself. Okay. Now I've gone through this list and grabbed the ones that I think are important. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each one of these. Now you can actually edit what you see here in this box as well. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to use this drop down and these features up here. For instance, if I want to make this bigger so I can show a little bit more, I can click this little big arrows. If I want to make it smaller, I can click this. These are all, it looks like, um, alphabetized by number. And if I wanted to, I could clean up this list by clicking this little gear and it would tidy it up. and I can choose the options that apply and apply them. Um, you can actually set a default hidden value. You can hide these if you want and it will be hidden except for you when you're logged in. 
so you can still search those. Uh, year built, that's a great one because we want to actually change that to minimum and maximum. That way it'll pull multiple results based on the person. Maybe they want a newer home, but they, they think maybe five years is a newer home, so they want to put in a range here. Subdivision is a great one. This is a good example of showing a lot of different fields that um, are added in by the realtor in a text field. And a lot of times they put these little extra things in there just to bump these up to the top of the search. So by coming over here and clicking the clean up to the display, you can tidy this up, remove items with three or fewer, move items that do not begin with a letter or a number to the end, and move these ones with characters, specific characters to the end. So I'm going to add parentheses in here, and I'm going to add a star, and I'm going to add a dash. So now this dash right here is just separating these from these, so it won't move it to the end. But I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. You won't see those changes here, but when I save the property type, and then refresh this page, you will see it here. Okay, so now we're going to come in here and we're going to look at some of this other information. There we go. Here's another one that I wanted to show you. Handicap accessible. Um, a lot of times this one I would change to yes or no. And there's other fields too that you may want to do that too. So. Keep in mind that each one of these you're going to want to check and see what the options are under here. You may want to um, adjust it a little bit and change some things. And once you're all done, you're going to go ahead and save property layout. Now once you save the property layout, you're going to want to come back here and always check to make sure it's updated. And there's Handicap Accessible. We know we just changed that one, so it did. If it doesn't update, then you can quickly come over here to Designs and then Wrappers and clear your static wrapper cache. So that may also help. It's typically for changes made on the outside of the site, but sometimes that does help. Now I'm going to go back to Pages and to Property Search and Fields and Residential. Now, as I'm changing these, I want you to notice that you have those subtypes up here. You can quickly switch between the subtypes as well just by clicking on them and then you'll see all of the different items here and you'll have a different list over here. So you can adjust these, move them around, put them up at the top, at the bottom, uh, do whatever it is that you want to do for these and you can then come up here and quickly save it and go through all of these property types quickly and save them. Now there's one other place that at each one of these searches you also have this top section and this section is um, notorious for having this status in here. And a lot of times if somebody were to check the status when they were searching, they actually may omit certain search results and we don't want them to do that. So typically I would go ahead and remove that. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go back to pages. I'm going to go to the page layout. Ah, my bad, let's go back. I'm going to go to the page preferences. And now in here Please don't change the page URL. If you do, it's going to become broken on your site. You can change the name of the page, but not the URL. The important part is search setup right here. Once you come here, you're going to see all of these different options. And if you mouse over them, you're going to see this handy little hide box or button. And so if you put your mouse over status and click hide and then come down here, since we're on the advanced page, we want to make sure the advanced fields are on and we're going to save. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to refresh. Now, another thing about the fields on this, you may want to adjust some of these items in the city page. And this is quite easy to do. You're going to come over here to Preferences. And you're going to go to City County Zip Code Lists and Manage. Now, a lot of times your MLS is going to put a bunch of cities in here and sometimes they may not be cities that you work in or they may be cities from another state or you know, there's a lot of different things you could find here. In this case, um, you know, there's a lot of cities in the Austin area so you, some of them may be farther away and not ones that you want to use or 
or allow your customers to search through. Sometimes you do because you can refer those out. If you get a lead for a city that is not in your area, you can always refer it out to another realtor and get a fee. But some people have very specific market areas and they want to narrow down this list to what works for them. So you can come over here to manage list, click on city, and you can actually manage your county list and your zip code as well because when you come here and search, you can change this and people can choose what they want to search by. So there are several different ones. Now I'm going to come here next to the list data source. Usually there's only one in here, but if you work more than one MLS, you may have two. We're going to click the dynamic, and then here's our list data. Now we have all of the cities in here. You can see that currently we also have some cities that were removed. A lot of them are from different states, and I've done that for this client, but you're going to find that in here you're going to see probably all the time different cities that have been added from different states because they can be added into your MLS. For instance, here's one. Here's another one. So this is the first thing that I would start with if these cities don't apply to you. So I'm going to leave these in and let my client go through and specifically change these because he's right on the border. There may be some of these areas that he wants to add in here. Other than that, you're going to go through this list and choose any other cities outside of your, inside your state as well that you may not want to work. And when you check them, all you have to do is check the box and hit remove selected and it's going to move it over here. And we'll see it. So going through here, I'm not going to save this, but you can if you want, go through, choose all of the cities that you don't want to show up in your list, remove it, and then save it and then go back and check your work. So once that's done and you've saved this list, check your work and then go back and do the county and then go back and do the zip code. And then this is the list that's going to show up on your site. If you find that that list doesn't show up and you've refreshed it and it's not correct, go back to your designs, pages, go to your preferences, and choose your city list here. So you can save it as a different city list and make sure it's been saved. Choose it directly here. And you're going to do that for each of those pages, each one of these address or basic under your preferences if you can adjust the city list will be found right here. And that's how you're going to edit all of the fields on your search pages. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos by subscribing to my YouTube channel and viewing some of my playlists to get handy tips.